Redditors who have a job where they go into other people's homes, plumbers, electricians, etc. What's the weirdest, most disturbing thing you've seen while working in a customer's house? I'm a face painter who does children's birthday parties. I've never had any super sketchy experiences, just a few rundown homes, but the kids always have fun. I went to one house, kinda messy and smelly, but no big deal. I started setting up my supplies and I hear a weird peep sound above me. I look up to see a guinea pig running through a clear plastic tube attached to the ceiling. Then I took a good look around the house and noticed the whole place is covered with a network of guinea pig tubes. The mom noticed me looking around and nonchalantly told me they have like 10 guinea pigs. This sounds like hell to clean. Aren't guinea pigs like really gross? A network of tubes? And I guarantee you they do not clean them as often as they should. The smell in there must be something else. We now have a Discord. Check out the server in the link in the description. Story 2. Used to deliver oxygen to people's homes. Saw plenty of weird things, lots of hoarders, but this one took the cake. He didn't want to let us into his house, but I had to do a home safety assessment before I could set up the equipment. He was anxious about letting me in because his house was a mess. He kept telling me about his messy house. Come to find out it wasn't just messy. It was filled with 200 chickens. He was proud of his show chickens and wouldn't let them live in a barn or coop. The smell was unbearable. Other than that, he was a super nice guy. Story 3. Food bank delivery to homebound elders. I always fill two banana boxes around a foot and a half by three and a foot deep of all types of foods and deliver to his house. One time after delivering to him for three years, I have to come inside because he has hurt his foot. He had never thrown out a single box. They lined every wall and entrance. He built a castle around his bed and a series of paths through his house. It was like those pillow forts you would make as a kid but with boxes. I asked him if he wanted help getting rid of them and he said no. He said that it was fun and helped him with his dementia. He's super fun. Story 4. I'm an electrician and I was troubleshooting a bad outlet in the bathroom of a former NFL player. I was taking all the outlets apart, following them, trying to see if I could trace out the home runs. When he comes in and starts talking about football, we are in the middle of talking when he just walks over to the toilet and starts taking a crap. I couldn't see him, but there was just a little pony wall between us. He didn't even stop telling his story. It was crazy. I walked out because of the smell. He came out a little later and it was like nothing ever happened. Story 5. Long ago I did estimates for fire and water damage repairs for a restoration company. This couple had a smallish fire in their bedroom. When I enter the home it's seemingly normal. Smells like smoke. There was a fire. Makes sense. They take me to the bedroom and it was the mattress that had endured the majority of the fire, along with some of the wall above the head of the bed and smoke damage to the ceiling. Next to each side of the bed are 10 gallon buckets filled to the brim with cigarette butts and hundreds spilled over onto the floor. I was just in awe how they could live like this in their bedroom, especially since the rest of their home seemed tidy and normal. Also completely beyond me why they wouldn't clean that crap up after the fire, if for no other reason than insurance adjusters being able to blame them rightly and possibly not pay out. How did the fire start? I asked. I'm required to ask. No idea, the husband said. Story 6. My boyfriend is a locksmith. During the 2008 recession, Las Vegas had hundreds slash thousands of homes that were getting repoed or abandoned. The company he worked for would have him go and change the locks to keep people out. And usually this happened in the middle of the night to limit the possibilities of running into ex-owners of the properties. I sometimes tagged along, mostly to explore some of the ridiculously big houses. But I also helped some of the time. This one house looked totally normal from the outside. You couldn't tell any difference from any other cookie cutter planned development houses. But inside, in every room, there were those timeout dolls. If you've never seen them, they are a doll that stands against the wall with its hands up to its face. And even more creepy, usually they have no face. But they look like a kid hiding their face or pouting after being put into a timeout. When I say they were in every room, I mean every single room. And not just one, but dozens lining the walls. Not laying down, but standing up against every wall of the house. The house's electricity had been shut off, so all we had was flashlights. Walking into each room, it did not get less creepy seeing doll after doll. He is already afraid of dolls, and this made it so much worse. Altogether, we counted 63, but there may have been more. Story 7. Disturbing? Not at all. Weird? 
A bit. I was a medical equipment delivery guy for a couple of years. Went into a dementia patient's house and had to instruct his caretaker on how to set up a large e-tank of O2. As I was kneeling down, my phone went off with my really low-key notification tone, which was a single beep. Well, the pet bird nearby seemed to have taken a shine to that noise and mimicked it perfectly in tone and volume. The caretaker and I looked at one another with her saying, I've been here for six years and he's never done that before. From then on, every time I delivered and knelt down to re-educate the caretaker, SOP demands it, that bird would instinctively ping me, until I let my phone notification sound go off, after which the bird would celebrate by bobbing his head up and down and turning in a circle. Story 8. I've posted this before a while back, but used to work pest control. Went in a student accommodation to deal with insects. Can't remember what type. Carpet moths or bed bugs, maybe. Anyway, that's not the point. This one room is fairly clean but we have to spray all fabrics with the chemical in question to prevent any eggs from having a safe space to gestate. So open up suitcases, wardrobes, that sort of thing. One suitcase is full of used tampons that she was saving for who knows what reason. And honestly, I don't want to know. Nasty crap, that. Didn't mention it, just did the job and tried to avoid eye contact at the end. Story 9. I did apartment maintenance for a while. We started quarterly inspections and the first day we opened a door, the smell that came out was indescribable. The guy who was with me was ex-military, and he said that we were about to find a body. In the maintenance community, this tends to not be a matter of if, but when. He told me that he would go in alone if I was uncomfortable with it, but I went in too. We didn't find a body. We just found a mountain of trash that took up the entire dining area. And honestly, just trash, mostly food packaging everywhere, and that accounted for a lot of the smell. We also found a dog, a very sweet golden retriever that was starved for attention. It was obviously being left to just pee and crap all throughout the unit. It probably hadn't been outside in weeks based off the smell and general condition of the unit. We went outside, locked up, and called the property manager for her to come by. While we were waiting, he came home. The look on his face when he saw us was terrifying. The manager talked to him and they set a plan about cleanup, and gave a time frame for him to get the unit back to regular. The other maintenance guy stayed with him for a while that evening. When we left the unit, he was sure that the guy would unalive himself that night. Turns out the renter had recently went through a very rough divorce, where his children had been removed from him with very little warning and he was spiraling. I left the company before I learned how it all ended. I hope he's doing better. Story 10. I used to do flooring, and we had to get up the subflooring due to water damage. Underneath it, there was a black garbage bag. When I opened said bag, it had a bunch of women's clothes in it. Didn't think anything of it until we dumped it out and found bloody, ripped underwear and torn dresses. Told the owner we had forgotten some stuff at work and wouldn't be back until tomorrow. Called the police and never went back. The house was soon up for sale a month or so later. Oh, this is full on like a criminal minds opening or something. Like, obviously, I hope it's something more innocuous, but I have no possible explanation for hiding a garbage bag of women's clothing that has blood on it under the floorboards. So, welp. Story 11. My dad has been a plumber for about 30 years. I've worked with him on and off since I was 12. The stories and things we've seen are beyond count, but I have two you guys might like. We get a service call to this house in Inglewood, California. It's an older house, probably built in the 50s. We arrive to a smell that is hard to describe. Imagine a monster made of diarrhea that has been baking in the desert sun for weeks. I grab my trusty Vicks vapor rub and basically shove it all up my nose. We knock on the door and are greeted by a yell to come in. As soon as the door opens, a wave of smell so foul that even a porta potty would find offensive smacks us in our nervous system. I push through it and enter the house. To say this person was a hoarder would be an understatement. Piles upon piles of pizza boxes, mountains of diet soda cans, jars of what I can only assume are pea sprinkled all over the house. The carpet squishing under our feet as we made it through the neckbeard museum to the hallway. The owner of this hideaway finally appears. The first thing I notice is the shirt. At some point, I'm assuming it was a white shirt, but time and gluttony have not been kind to it. It's a mix of colors and stains. His shorts look stiff to the touch. I'm assuming he jerks it in them. His hair is greasy and black and a scraggly beard adorned his skinny face. He says that his water has been shut off for eight months, but he finally paid the bill and wants us to make sure his shower and toilet are working okay. I already know what's coming. I can see a picture in my mind of the horror that awaits us in the bathroom. We walk over to the bathroom door and open it. My eyes, my poor baby eyes, fall upon a sight I will never forget. 
This bathroom was a war crime. The United Nations would put sanctions against it if they knew it existed. Entire nations would weep at its sight and smell. Terrorist organizations would consider it cruel for such a place to even exist. Guantanamo Bay is a five-star resort compared to this sin against nature. Every surface is covered in crap and pee and paper. The toilet, the sink, the bathtub, the floor, the walls, the ceiling. All of it is covered in a layer of human crap. I've literally swam in crap before, like in a hazmat dive suit. But this? This is a declaration of war on humanity. This is a crime against God and man. This is a holy war. It's the seventh seal opening and showing us the face of death. I turn to my dad and just say, no. He looks at me with a face I can only describe as a mixture of fear, pain, sadness, and rage. He looks over at the owner of this freaking hate crime and says, May God have mercy on you. Good luck. We walk out to our truck and never speak of this day. The darkest day humanity has ever faced. But we saved you all. To unleash this plague into the world is something we could never live with. Now the second story. For reference, I'm 6'5 and 280. This story begins with a warning. If you're scared of spiders, you might want to skip this one. Crawling. Ask any plumber worth his salt. Crawling under houses can be the best and worst part of your job. Sure, it's cold and dark, but no one is going to disturb you. But sometimes it's extremely tight and moving around can make you flip out if you don't know how to calm yourself down. And sometimes you see things you've never wanted to see. I've crawled into all sorts of stuff under houses with Dad. Possums, wasps' nests, crap, blood, pee, dead animals, but nothing compares to the time I solo crawled under a house to find myself in a scene from arachnophobia. It was summertime in Los Angeles and it was hot. I put my crawl suit on and grabbed my tool tray. It had various tools in it, pliers, screwdrivers, pipe cutter, blowtorch, etc. I begin shoving my large body into a hole not made for me. I worm my way into the hole feet first and finally slip into the sweet, cool darkness. My dad hands me the crawl light and I take a look. I have about 5 inches of space between me and the floor above. The ground is dry and cool. I don't see anything out of the ordinary and begin to shimmy my massive frame as fast as I can over to the spot where I'm supposed to work. I get to the pipe and start taking a look to see if I can spot a leak. Now, have you ever walked through a spider web and felt like you had a bunch of spiders all over you but didn't? I feel that as I'm rolling over trying to check this pipe out. I think nothing of it, I'm under a house. I'm in the spider realm, it happens. I start digging through my tool tray to look for some soap to test the pipe. The feeling of crawly skin becomes more and more intense. I grab my crawl light and bring it closer to me. That's when I see them. Thousands upon thousands of them. A literal wave of baby black widows washing over my legs. Now normally I'm not scared of spiders, but being covered in baby black widows invoked a fear unlike anything I've ever felt. I screamed. I screamed like a 10 year old girl. I started thrashing my body all over the ground, trying to get them off me, my legs and hands slamming into the ceiling. I start going into this trance of the walls closing in. The spiders crawling all over me coupled with the tight space makes me hyperventilate and panic. I've moved faster than I've ever moved before. I crawled like a baby on speed to the entrance. I could still feel them all over me in my crawl suit, trying to find my soft flesh. I can see the light about 20 feet in front of me. The light is like the tunnel people see when they die. I begin to feel small pricks on my hands and neck. I make it to the crawl space hole and feel my dad's iron grip grab me by the shirt. He summons all of his dad powers to yank me out of the hole and toss me onto the ground. I'm rolling around swearing and yelling, trying to get these eight-legged jerks off of me when I hear my dad shout, STOP MOVING! I finally look up to see him standing over me with the fire extinguisher from our truck. And he says, close your eyes and mouth. And then he blasts me with it. I stand up and look down to see hundreds of little spiders freaking the crap out from the fire extinguisher chemicals. I peel off the crawl suit and start to inspect myself. All in all, I only had four bites. I'm not allergic to black widow venom, but man, did they hurt. We never did finish that job. The owner refused to pay for pest control. The poop dive story. You ever have one of those days where things just don't go your way? This was one of those days. Now, I'm not supposed to be working with my dad today, but I get a call around 9am that he has a job he needs help with, and he will be by to pick me up in 30 minutes. We arrive at some cross-section of streets in one of the many ghetto areas of LA. I see city trucks and workers huddled around a sewage access panel. My first thought is, well this is strange, why is the city here? We exit the truck and walk over to the group, and that's when the smell hits me. My feeble vocabulary can't begin to describe the foul stench wafting from that hole in the ground. 
It's like an atomic bomb of hot all-you-can-eat Indian food diarrhea was dropped on a city made of weak old animal carcasses that had been dipped in a volcano's butt. It smelled so bad that I was physically hit by it, like Mike Tyson had covered his hands in Michael Moore's crap to add poison damage to his strikes. Like if a sentient poo monster had declared war on my very being. It smelled like someone who should be dead had violently crapped in a Sears dishwasher and hit steam. It smelled like the Civil War had had a baby with the Vietnam War that was a gangrenous, pus-filled, maggot-ridden dumpster full of dead skunks in the summer fart monster. We approached the group of city workers, and my dad starts to fill me in on the situation. Apparently, a blockage was making all of the sewage from the surrounding four blocks fill up this access point. The city workers had outright refused to go down there, so they contracted the company my dad worked for to go in and remove the blockage. I'm not sure of what's involved with this process. I was 18. I have no idea what's going on. All I know is my dad, his boss, and his boss's boss were all here. My dad says we are going to dive into this crap lake and remove the blockage before it starts spilling over into the streets. I'm thinking, welp, at least I'll get paid more. So we go over to the head boss's van to get our suits on. This takes about 20 minutes. But I'm covered head to toe in hazmat gear that's duct taped on. We waddle over to the entrance of hell and begin crawling down the ladder. From what I can remember, it was a strange feeling. Like floating in water without it touching you. If that water was human crap and pee. And you bumped into chunks of paper and tampons and other nasty stuff. At this point, I'm 200% done with this entire day. I'm just floating at the surface holding the lead up to my dad's wire. I feel a tug which means he's ready to come back up. His head breaks the surface of the liquid crap and he yells, Frickin' tree down there! Now, trees don't just appear in sewage lines. Apparently, a tree's roots had become so massive and tangled that the paper products had formed a sort of seal on all of the loose spots, blocking all of the wastewater. We've done all we can and come out of the new public pool. We get to a hazmat shower tent and are sprayed down for what seems like hours. Big old scrub brushes with nasty chemicals scrape our clothes and skin. My dad's boss hands him a check for some absurd amount of money and we get in the truck and leave. This was the last time my dad ever worked for or with the city. And that was the last time I would ever dive into crap. Not enough money in the world for me to do that again. This guy dissed his own vocabulary in the last story, but he was pretty eloquent if I had to say so myself. That guy is a natural storyteller. They were gross and horrifying, but good stories. Story 12. Was a firefighter another time in my life. Had a middle of the night call to a mobile home for an elderly lady once. We walk in and it's dark, but as my eyes start to adjust, I think, oh, that's weird wallpaper. I keep looking around and, huh, it's on the ceiling too. Weird inconsistent patterns and rectangle shapes. Eyes adjust some more while we are talking to her. Wait, are those puzzles? She had hundreds of puzzles that she had glued when completing them, and then glued them to every surface of her mobile home. Walls, ceiling, living room, bedroom, every square inch covered. Weird, but you do you, especially in your own home. Certainly not as bad as most in this thread. Story 13. I delivered pizzas, but for older customers, I would go into their homes to bring it inside for those who were severely handicapped, or just didn't have the strength to bring their food inside. One time, I delivered to this lady who was covered in cat hair, head to toe, and the inside of her house was rancid. I mean, I couldn't go in there without holding my breath. One time, I went, and she had in her kitchen on a table a paper plate with what looked like teeth, and I mean a lot of teeth. Different colors and shapes and just horrifically repulsive. Don't know whose teeth they were. From what I could tell, she had all, if not most. Haven't heard any stories about her since, so I'm guessing she moved or something. Never will forget that smell, though. Ugh. Story 14. Was a carpet cleaner. Adult content. Like, so much. Like, you guys. So much adult content. Probably the weirdest and most disturbing was the gay couple who had an entire room of framed photos of them in different positions and outfits and or various states of undress. They liked to watch while I cleaned that room. I kept my eyes low and didn't focus on any specific one or make eye contact with them. Just kept about my business steaming the carpets and pretending there wasn't anything unusual about what I or they were doing. Definitely a weird kink of some kind. My area historically has been very conservative and repressed, so I don't know, maybe that factors in. They tipped well, so I kept my mouth shut for the most part, and I just made sure when their address came up that I always got that job. 